Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on the third part of our Primaris Space Marine painting series and uh, we're kind of getting to the end of the project here. Now the third part is going to be a bit of a mismatch of everything that didn't kind of fit into parts one and two. Um, we're going to be working on our ancient banner. Uh, we'll be working on some heraldry and iconography so that'll be everything from the pauldrons to the uh, hip plates on our commander to knees pads things like that. Uh, then we'll be working on the power sword. We'll move off then to the eye lenses which are always a little tricky to do and then of course we'll be working on the decals so actually really looking forward to getting these things done I'm uh, very excited to see these guys on the battlefield all done up and of course we'll definitely involve them in some of our narrative work so uh, without further ado let's get going on and uh, we're going to start with our ancient and banner uh, so we'll work on his helmet and the whole of the banner there all right, so we're going to get started with our Ancient with the Banner here. And I'm just going to use the Lead Belcher. Now, I would normally, of course, do this uh, while I'm doing all the other Lead Belcher as well. I uh, just wanted to kind of get him up to, you know, the baseline before wash. And then we'll work on all the special features. So specifically his helmet and our banners. So we're going to start with Lead Belcher here. And we're just going to work on uh, the components. So the side of the helmet, these metallic pieces on the side of the helmet here. And after we've done the pieces for the helmet, uh, we'll focus on the pole or the post for the banner here. Now the end caps are going to be in a gold. Uh, the aquila on the top is going to be in gold. So the end caps, the three at the uh, each of the pole ends, and then the aquila are going to be in gold. Everything else is going to be in our lead belcher here. All right, so we've got all of the lead belcher done. So anything that's going to be silver on the marine is now complete. Uh, we've done the whole post up here. Uh, again, we're just leaving uh, little spaces here for the, the gold, for the aquila and all that. Uh, but for the helmet, uh, we're essentially done. So I'm going to go now uh, and put in our white scar. So I'm going to do a full uh, white helmet for this guy because he's an ancient, uh, old school veteran, new school ancient, I guess. And uh, this is a lot of thin down kind of white that I'll be using. Um, just diluting it with a little bit of water off to the side on a palette here. And I'm going to go over any of the parts that are not uh, metallic on the helmet. So it'll be his uh, front face plate uh, and the whole helmet here, uh, leaving only that lead belcher, that silvery color where we had before. Now it goes on a little bit pasty, but just keep going with the thin coats and you get a nice even white. Okay, and continuing down with our uh, white scar here, uh, there's just two pieces on the banner, now that we're starting on this, uh, that are going to get a little bit of kind of pre-detailing here. And that is going to be the stars. So again, just take your time. Now, if you go over, the reason we're starting with the fine details first is because it's a heck of a lot easier to paint uh, your base coat, your base color back over top again than it is to really get this perfect without messing up your base coat. Um, did a pretty decent job on this one. It's not too bad, um, but take a couple swings at it. Make sure you're super thinned out. And then in addition to that, there's this ring right here that we'll want to paint. Now you'll see that I kind of messed up a little bit in there and it's actually okay because it's far easier for me to go in with the other color and just fill that in than it is to get this detail in here. So uh, I'm not too stressed out about mistakes on this side because of course we'll just go in and fill it with our color later. So take your time, get a few nice thin coats going here. And then, like I said, if you slop over, it's not a big deal at this point because uh, we're going to be coming back in with the base colors again. All right, next up on the banner, we're going to go with Screaming Skull and we're going to do all the kind of scroll work and the skulls and yeah. I was debating back and forth whether to do kind of the um, the 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 aquilae the, the the kind of skull and 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 wings up here in in kind of a bone color like kind of a, a linen color but because i'm going to be doing the outside border in a gold uh, i'm actually going to leave that gold but what i will do is the skull here so I'll work on the skull here uh, and then i'll finish that up there and then i'll do the scroll work all up and in here and again, like I said before, you don't want to you want to be pretty tidy, but you don't want to be super obsessive about it anyway, because um, we can always go in. And we'll do a refill there with the uh, McCrag blue when we kind of got all the intricate details done. It's sometimes way easier to do kind of the more uh, intricate details uh, first, and then just paint around them after, and that'll be the case with uh, with this for sure. 
Okay, so we'll get to finish this guy off here. Then we'll do the scroll work down here, these pieces here. Okay, and I'll also do, of course, you know, it's kind of thin down here. Um, I'll also do the purity seals down at the bottom. I'll do those in the Screaming Skull as well, that kind of linen-y parchment type look and feel to it. And on the back, we'll do the same, of course, make sure we get it all the way around them. And so, yeah, so I'll just finish those off and we'll be right back with nice, you know, thin, lots and lots of thin coats, better than big thick ones anyway. All right, I'll keep trucking along with this and we'll be right back. Okay, with all that Screaming Skull applied now, I even actually tagged this little skull here, kind of got away from me uh, when I was looking, I just kind of came across it later. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to do him too. So uh, I did that skull as well. So now we're going to move on to the gold on the model. We'll start with uh, Retributor Armor. And um, again, I would do this at the same time that I'm doing the uh, Retributor Armor, uh, you know, the Aquilae on the chest and then, you know, the, you know, the iconography and the shoulder pads and all of that as well. And what we're going to do with this one is just a couple of things in here. Uh, we'll start with the uh, Aquilae at the top. So I'll just base that all in gold. So you want a nice, obviously, thin coat. You don't want to clog up that detail. And then the feet that are down here. So I'll do that front and back. We also want to do the end caps uh, for our flag. And again, we're just doing a quick base coat, uh, not touching any of that other stuff that's in there. So you just want to take your time, work your way through. And then on the model, Uh, itself here so on the rest of it here uh, we're going to do inside the flag itself we're going to do the uh, the skull and wings in here so I'll do the, the the skull and wings I'll finish that off again nice and tidy and uh, on the inside track I'm going to do just using the edge of my brush trying to keep it as clean as I can but again I can always fill it in later but as clean as I can, I'm going to work my way on this piece that goes all the way around the outside. So there's these little spiky deals in here as well. And I'll just work my way around. All right, so with all the gold finished off now, it's looking uh, really sharp. Uh, lots and lots of contrast and detail there. So I'm really digging that. Um, the next up, I'm just going to do, there's this little kind of crown, this radiant crown coming above. And I wanted something a little different than just the gold everywhere. So we're gonna go with Runefang Steel. And normally I'd build it up if it was a mechanical piece with lead belcher. Um, but I like the fact that because this is a fabric or like a, a tapestry, uh, some kind of illustration, um, that it's actually going to be, uh, you know, these bright kind of silver threads and all that. So it wouldn't be as dirty. So just going to go in here and go once over this kind of doing each of these spikes as I go along. And in addition to that, there's another one in here as well. And I'll mark that as well. Now, uh, we're gonna get some tricky trickiness going on. We wanna paint on the inside in a bit, but uh, we'll kind of burn that bridge when we, uh, we're on it, right? So, okay, so I'm gonna just make sure that this is nicely detailed up and we'll be back. We'll do uh, the laurels next, and then we can do the base of the flag. Okay, so with the silver all done, uh, again, not the most tidy job in the world, but uh, we're just going to go back in here with uh, the McCraig blue and just tidy up after. Um, the last kind of major feature that we'll have on the body of the flag here is going to be our uh, laurels, and so we'll do that in Castellan Green. So we'll grab that there. Uh, I'm using Castellan Green. It's a nice, good base. Uh, it's got lots of kind of vibrancy to it. And that's kind of my goal with this guy is because he's such a central character, I want it really, really, really vibrant. So uh, I'll just kind of work my way through on here. And I'll just get the laurels done. And then we'll start working on, there's a stripe going up the center of the banner. And that's going to be kind of the first hint of what we're going to do with our shoulder pads. Uh, something a little unique and different, a little more kind of pre-heresy than what's usually out there right now. And it'll break up the blue quite a bit, which will be nice. But uh, we'll get going on that in a second. So I'm going to uh, finish off this uh, Castell and Green all the way around the laurels and be right back. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to run a stripe of Fenrisian Grey uh, down the center line of the banner. And I'm going to mark that out by using my, my Micron pen here. Now, these are 
awesome, awesome pens to have. And I'm just going to draw a line, just kind of a rough line, right down the center of the banner here. Okay, and I'll even make sure I go down this way as well. And then, just so I can meter something off, about a quarter inch or about five millimeters off, half a centimeter or so, uh, I'm going to draw another line. And that line is going to be my essentially working line. And I'm trying to line it up with this kind of um, the standard uh, down here, this heraldry down here. I'm trying to line it up just with that uh, and just carry it along. So I hope the goal here is to line that right up. And of course, there's a ripple in the banner and all that as well. So it makes things a little tricky. So that's why I drew that center line. Uh, so I would have something to kind of measure it against. And let's encompass in that center line this ring at the top here. So I'll just do that. So maybe down a little bit more. Uh, yeah, maybe a little more than that. So again, just kind of planning it out beforehand and you know, feel free to go rough. We're actually painting over both of uh, these elements here. So uh, super chill, uh, just uh, kind of work your way through, see what you kind of like, and you can always paint over the pen so you won't even see it. So um, now, now that I got that marked out, let's start with our first piece. So I've got my Fenrisian gray here and I'm just going to uh, start filling in that center line and again, we're trying to match up with that heraldry down at the bottom. And so we'll just take our time and we'll just very roughly start painting in that piece. So you can see here it's picking up a little bit of the pen, but that's fine. Uh, we're gonna do a couple coats of this, so it'll be just fine. Uh, and then I'm going to fill in, and you can see how much easier it is just to fill in around the detail as opposed to trying to actually paint that detail itself. So I'll give it a couple light coats here and I'm going to extend it just inside the boundary of that uh, gold banner. And I'll just give it a couple light coats and we'll see how it goes. All right, and so after a little bit of humming and hawing and kind of trying to figure out how I wanted to do it, I almost went a full brush width uh, wider than my actual uh, original sketch was. But again, it I wanted to match it up with this line down here and having a little bit extra on either side of this feature up at the top wasn't too bad of an idea. So I uh, put a little bit in here in that kind of silvery uh, threaded area in there as well and just kind of expanded it out. Now for the bottom, it's gonna be super simple. We're just going to put in doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, a little bit down here on this bottom piece of heraldry. And uh, I'm going to go with the blue on one side, uh, kind of the blue kitty corner to each other. And then I'll do the gray in these quarters here. All right. So I'll do them in the opposite quarters. And then I'll just do two thin coats here, but I'll just kind of rough it in for now. And then I'll do the center line in the middle one here. Now this is all getting washed, so if you brush over to the other one, it's fine. But I'm going to leave it just like this, just to give me a little bit of color variation and really tie in that Fenrisian gray band. Uh, we're going to see that on the shoulder pads as well. We're going to see it uh, obviously on the vehicles. If you've seen the other uh, uh, the vehicle painting tutorials, it'll be on the vehicles as well. All right, so now that I've got the Fenrisian gray, all lined up in here. It looks really nice and solid. I'm just going to clean up the inside of this uh, gold outline here with McCrag blue and just kind of restoring back the original color uh, of, of the blue in there and just tidying up all the little fine details. So uh, obviously our stripe here we need to uh, just clean up just a little bit. So I'm just going to rough that in like that and then I'll fill it in obviously. Uh, and going around the stars uh, I did a pretty not amazing job here. So I'm just gonna run the brush in and around. Uh, the filigree that's up in here, I'll make sure I go around that. And then anything like, you know, the inside here where I've gone over a little bit, I'll just tidy up super neat, whether it's here or whether it's the, uh, you know, the screaming skull from the, the parchment and all that. And I'll just work my way around on the inside of the banner here, uh, just cleaning up all these these illuminations. 
Okay, so we can see that it's all tidied up now, looking really sharp. Uh, again, we're going to wash and then we can keep cleaning it up as we go. Uh, and once we wash, it'll bring out all the little details, so it'll really make everything kind of pop. Um, finally, uh, we've got our base of Mephiston Red here, a nice, deep, rich red. And I'm going to use this initially for the purity seals down at the bottom here. So anytime you see a purity seal, we're just gonna dab that in with Mephiston Red. Make sure you get all the way around here. And then I'm gonna go hard on the flag, on the actual banner itself. So uh, everything that is outside of this, outside of this line, uh, in behind everything, is going to be in Mephiston Red. So uh, for an example here, I'm just gonna start working my way up. Now, this is why I was a little sloppy uh, when I was putting this all together because Mephiston Red is a very good uh, base paint. It's got lots of pigment and so it covers things up really nicely. And it's just this deep, rich red, which is which is awesome. So uh, being very careful of all the detail that I've painted, I'm going to work my way around uh, both front and back of the banner. All right, so it looks like we've got all of our base colors down. Uh, quite a bit of work, obviously, on the, the banner, but it is one of those, uh, literally a high point, you know, figuratively and literally, of the army where your eyes will get drawn to it constantly. So uh, nice to have all that extra little bit of detail and kind of visual interest in there. So really, really good. All right, so we're at wash time. So I did a dummy check around, make sure I got everything that I needed to get. And now we're going to wash it with uh, the Insidious Wash here. This is 25% uh, Nuln Oil, 25% Agrax Earth Shade, and 50% regular cheapy floor wax. Um, the floor wax uh, gives it a bit of a sheen, which is fine. Uh, and uh, But it's the big value here is that it's a monster flow aid. Uh, if you're not happy with the end result of the shininess, I mean, that's totally cool. Um, I hit it with a purity seal after and what the purity seal does is it really tamps down that uh, that that gloss that varnish at the end all right so i'll just continue on washing this and i'm gonna make sure i don't let anything pool up on me here and i'll let it sit for about 45 minutes or so before i come back all right, so now what we've got is we've got uh, the wash all finished up and it's popped out tons and tons and tons of detail. And uh, we're just gonna start right away into the rebase coating or just kind of layering up over top. Now, the white's kind of a little tricky situation here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use some thinned out white and we're just gonna pop uh, a little bit of extra color on top. And I'm just gonna work my way around and again, just picking out kind of the major. So this is going to take a while. It's going to look a little messy, but I actually like that. It looks like it's a little more kind of battle-worn, but it's definitely white. It's not like a gray. So I'll just kind of work my way through building up the color just on the extreme highlights, leaving all of that shading intact. All right, so the helmet's all done. Um, now, with the helmet, it's a little bit tricky doing these kind of uh, these slits up at the front. These I call them gills, you know, or they, <laughs> they've got kind of a sharky kind of look to them, which I think is awesome. And doing the white really kind of pops them out. Now, if you need to just kind of bring it back in again, don't be shy about taking some extra wash and just kind of tossing it in and, you know, just, just kind of filling it in a little bit. And if it makes it a little bit too dark, just do a nice thin coat of white and just keep working your weight kind of back and forth until, uh, until perfection there, until you're pretty pleased with it. So I do like it looking a little bit gritty. So, um, you know, having a little bit of kind of dirt and muck and mire in there makes the white seem to be even brighter. I, I don't know. It's the contrast that kind of picks up your eye. So I really, really like that. All right. So uh, moving along, there's just two more white elements left on the uh, banner here. And it's going to be um, this ring up here at the top. Now I've, uh, I've got not too much paint on my brush here, but I'll just kind of do like a, just a gentle, super careful work around on that ring. And then I'll also touch up these stars here. Now with the wash being done and the blue in the background, it's a little easier to see. So I'm just going to do a little overbrush, very carefully taking my time over these stars. 
So the white's all finished here. I'm really liking the way the, the helmet turned out. It's a little bit gritty. And of course the stars against the field of blue, beautiful, lots and lots of contrast. So our next step here, we're going to be using Screaming Skull. And we're going to be going over top of uh, all of our uh, major highlights here on the, the skulls and the parchment as well. So with the parchment, uh, I'm going to be very careful here. And I'm just going to do kind of a little bit of a striation. Um, I want there to be some uniqueness to this, so uh, I'm going to be going over the major highlights. But I'll just start with this, and then I'm just going to build it up. So that I've got a little bit of kind of uh, grit or grime to it, or shading to it. But um, I want to be building up essentially all of the, the highlights. So I kind of just went over the major highlights first, it doesn't look very good at the moment. And then I'm just going to go in and just keep adding until I've just got a little bit of the low lights uh, left in there. And I get to a place that I'm happy with. Okay, so I've got it built up now to the point where I'm really happy. I've got a little bit of the low lights still left in there. You still see a little bit of the kind of the, a little bit of the crease left in there as well. And I'm just going to continue on. Now, obviously with these pieces down here, it's going to be tricky to and actually highlight them. So I'm just going to just overbrush them I uh, just give them a little bit of color back. And once that's finished up, I'll do the parchment down here as well. And I'm going to do the same, the same thing. I'm just going to be doing kind of a streaky pull down of the paint here. Okay, with the linen and the skull all kind of done, the, uh, the, the parchment paper there all done, uh, I'm then going to work on the purity seals. And just as before, I'm just going to pick up all the spots where the shade did not settle. And I'm just going to tint that kind of back up with our Screaming Skull. All right, now that we're done with the Screaming Skull everywhere, uh, we've got our Purity Seals, the two skulls, the banner, and of course the parchment in here. Uh, we're going to work on Castell and Green, and we're going to just do a nice, like kind of simple overbrush onto the leaves. Now, um, there's lots of detail, and the wash didn't penetrate too much here. So just let's switch it upside down, it's gonna be easier for me because I always kind of stroke um, the brush towards myself here. So uh, I'm just gonna work my way through, again, making sure that I leave that shading in there. And then I'm going to use Strake and Green and I'm just going to do uh, edge highlight on the very tops of the leaves of the laurels. So steady hand time, make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush. And I'm just going to go over, let's see if the camera can even focus that close. Uh, I'm just going to go over the very top edge of the laurel leaves. All right, so the banner's really coming together, lots of pop with all the different colors, uh, really liking it. Uh, but for now, we're going to focus on the blue, the field of blue in here now. Uh, it's going to be obviously the same blue as our uh, the blue that we're doing for the armor here as well. So uh, referring again back to our first video about how we did all the armor and all that, I'm going to take Altdorf Guard Blue, and while I would be doing the armor normally, as per the first video in the series, uh, I would also take a swing at the banner and all I would be doing is just covering the major kind of highlights. Now, uh, if I tilt it up a bit and let the lights pick it up a little bit here, you'll see that there's lots and lots of, you know, that, these kind of major ripples in the fabric. So I'm just going to go over the major ripples in the fabric here and of course the larger kind of fields of blue in here as well. And I'm going to work my way around. Uh, just giving it that little bit of punch of color and leaving that kind of recess shading over that McCrag blue. And yeah, so I'll just keep going like this. So just picking out the major highlights and the big kind of open fields of blue as well. Okay, so I've got all the major highlights done on the banner and I did, uh, I polished up the marine armor just as... Uh, uh, obviously, you know, at the, kind of the same time. So I'd be doing these simultaneously, again, following most of the stuff that was done in that first video there, just for the marine armor. But I figured since I was doing that, I'll just do a pass over the marine as well. Uh, next up is going to be our Lothurn Blue, and it's going to be the same drill. I'm going to do the highlight on the marine, and I'll do this uh, pass on the banner as well. And I'm just going to pick now the, kind of the extreme highlights. And normally I would edge highlight at this point, but... Um, 
I'm just going to pick out the extreme highlights. So again, if I tilt towards the light, you can kind of see the bumps on here. So I'm just going to go off to the very kind of tips of the, uh, or very tops of the folds in the fabric. And just give it that little bit of extra color. So I'll work my way around here and I'll do the armor as well. And I'm just going to touch on the very tops of the highlights. Almost like an edge highlight, only it's just focusing on the tops of the folds. So as I was rocking around the uh, the armor here, just doing the highlight at the same time as I did the banner, I recognized, or I, I found out, or I observed that I missed this part here. So um, the blue panel up in the top left of the heraldry down here, uh, I just of course did with the Altdorf Guard blue and then highlighted with the uh, Lothurn blue. And then I did the same for these top and bottom stripes here in the middle. Now, moving on to the Fenrisian Gray, I am going to, do, 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 uh, I'm just going to do that center banner again, or the, the center stripe in the banner. And I'm also going to do the heraldry in the bottom. But because I'm worried I might forget, I might just do the heraldry at the bottom here first. So I'm just going to do that streaky finish um, that we similarly did with our scripting here. And so I'll start with my edge highlight all the way around. And then I'll just kind of streak down a little bit, just so I have a little bit of depth of color in that piece. So it's not completely just a perfect sheet of color. And then I'll do the same with this piece up here. So I just want a little bit of kind of roughness to it, uh, just so it adds a little bit of visual interest here. And then um, I'll go back with my, back to my banner, this central line in my banner here. And again, I'm going to go with kind of a streaky kind of finish to it, uh, just to make it look like cloth or fabric, or just give it a little bit of extra depth. It's kind of a way to cheat um, if it's not actually much of a 3D element to it. All right, so I'll work on this streaky finish here till I'm happy, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're just missing the metallics here uh, on the inside to finish things off, but before I do that, I'm going to go over our banner, this, this big, beautiful block of red uh, that's gonna really draw your eye in here. And I'm just going to go over the major highlights with the Mephiston red, uh, very similar to what we did with the Captain's Cape in the second video here. Um, we're just gonna go over the major, major highlights, and yeah. Um, I, you know, I love, I love the way the red kind of comes out. So, uh, I'm just going to start off nice, simple, easy, uh, you know, decent light coats. And I'm just going to go over, uh, everything here that didn't have that recess to it. So wherever the shade has settled, I'm going to bring in, uh, the red here and I'm just going to take my time and work my way through making sure that I get all the major highlights. And then of course we'll come in with a, uh, a kind of an extreme highlight pass with the Wild Rider Red. But for this one, just take your time, work your way through. Uh, on the top bands here, I'm just going to go again over the majors, trying to leave as much of that shading as I can, that, that, that recess shading in there. So, all right, I'm gonna work my way around and I'm gonna, again, just as always, keep refining until I get to where I'm happy. All right, so that banner is really coming along now, and we're going to just finish things off here uh, with a little bit of Wild Rider Red. And um, essentially, I'm just going to do what would be an edge highlight uh, around the outside. So I'm just going to work my way around, uh, just giving that little pop of color to the outside. So I worked my way all the way around with that kind of nice edge highlight. Uh, and whenever you get to an end, you can always just feather to make it look like it's part of the banner. Um, but for the most part, you can just do the, the straight up edge highlight. And of course, we'll do it down the sides uh, and all that as well. Uh, just like this, it's like super simple. So I'll just work my way around and I'll just do the, the complete edge all the way around. And on the other side, uh, we'll just do just again, just a, a light feathering in of the most highest edge of the folds. So I'll just streak that in like this. And again, I'll just pick out kind of the, the higher points. And again, very careful of leaving those two tones of shade now on the darker red and then that washed bit of red. And then once we've got that red all kind of tidied up nicely, um, we'll just move in here and we'll just do an outline on the purity seals in here. So I'm just going to pick out just kind of that top level that ring around <clears throat> the impression there. 
and that'll brighten those guys up quite a bit as well. All right, so super sweet, uh, really coming together, tidied up super nice. The red is beautiful and kind of popped and, and bright. Uh, and of course, we can always go in and just take a little bit of wash and just kind of paint down some low lights if we felt we overdid a little bit. Uh, but for now, it looks really, really good. So the next step for me here is I'm just going to be working through the metallics. Um, so with the Runefang steel, um, as I was doing a pass uh, on the marine, uh, I would typically uh, tie in with the banner as well so when I was doing the bolt rifle and I was doing the you know all the different mechanical parts and, and all that um, I'll take a pass with the rune fang steel as well so uh, just a very easy highlight here next to nothing just making sure that I'm fixing any of the errors that were there and uh, just be super stable with your hand work here so I'll go through and I'll just very carefully tie this back up. And then on top of that, I'll also take our Runefang steel here and I'll just do a, a bit of an edge or a streak on the pole. Okay, just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of a brightness kind of pop there. And on the back, I'll do the same thing. And I'll just kind of work my way up the pole. The old flagpole here. Okay, and then I'll pick out all the fixings at the top here. All the hardware and all that. All right, once the silver's all done, I'll be doing the uh, fulgurite copper up, uh, and I'll just be highlighting the uh, gold elements, not only of the marine, so basically at the same time as I'm, I'm doing up the marine, uh, but I'll also be doing the uh, elements up top here as well. So uh, the aquile, of course, and the fulgurite's got just such a nice, bright uh, kind of sheen to it. It's got a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of the kind of the silver and gold in there at the same time. So really, really cool. So I'll be doing the two aquile here, and then I'll be doing just this little bit of filigree, this outline around the outside. Uh, I'll just take my time and very gently go over this whole ring all the way around the outside and I'll do the little finials at the end here so just grab those and just give them a little pop of the color and of course uh, for the flag portion there's gonna be a little bit down here at the bottom as well uh, now as I finish the base that might get a little tricky but I can always retouch up so um, so the fulgurite copper is going to go on the two aquile it's going to go on the finials at the end the kind of rectangle around the outside here all right, so I'll continue on with that, and I'll also uh, go through and tidy up the rest of the marine while I'm at it. All right, so with all the major coloring done and the uh, kind of reestablishing of the metallics in there as well, uh, I'm going to start working with my Micron pen again here. This is the 005. Uh, I grab them from art supply stores, whichever. And I'm just going to do the black lining on the banner, and that's going to be super easy. So anywhere where two colors meet, uh, or anywhere where there's two kind of textures that meet. Uh, I'll put that in there as well. And all we're looking to do is just establish just a nice kind of fine uh, line to any of our items in here. So wherever there's two colors, again, through here, you'll see that uh, the, the joining between the two. So I'll just kind of draw in that black line. And all it does is it just provides a little bit of definition to see. And of course, you know, anywhere where there's kind of two different textures or two colors or what have you, it just tidies it up really nicely for us. All right, I'll just work my way around and then we'll come back and do our scroll work. Okay, we're getting really close now. Um, all that's left here that we're going to be working on is the little bit of scroll work here. And uh, unfortunately, I was just informed that the uh, the decal stuff that I wanted to get in, the Vallejo decal stuff, uh, isn't actually going to be available uh, for another week or so. So I'm actually going to do that as an adjunct. But for now, uh, we're going to work on the scroll work and the purity seals here. So uh, let's start off with the purity seals. Purity seals are super simple. Uh, I'm just going to go in and just, you know, kind of scrawl in some text and they're kind of small, so you don't have a whole lot uh, to work with. And so I'm just gonna kinda write in a little bit of text in here and it looks 
nice and kind of kind of kind of busy in there. Okay, now for the larger scroll work, however, we can do some really cool stuff. Uh, for example, I'm going to do an illuminated character, which is just a little bit of a big uh, character. Uh, and in honor of our big Bobby G, our Robert Gilman, I'm just going to do a larger R. So something that we can kind of see and register and understand. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of text writing in here as well. It's a little curved, so it's not fantastic. And how I write the text is basically, I just want to make sure that it feels like I'm writing words. So like a short one, another short one, some long ones. And it's almost like you're doing like a handwriting of the, of the text onto the banner. And then I'll just do the same for the other side and I'll do a G. And then I'll mark the G. So we've got a little bit of a serif text to it here. And then I'll just, again, do the same process. Okay, and with that text done, you can see that it gives it a little bit of personality and it's just essentially squiggly lines, but it's almost like you're writing the words only in super small detail. Now, the next piece that I wanna work on here is this, uh, this little banner across the, the middle of the actual full banner here. And I'm going to use the word uh, ultras on it. Or I guess, sorry, ultra, I suppose. And so I'm gonna do a quick rundown of the text that I wanna do beforehand. So, grabbing my pen, um, I'm going to start with uh, uh, a little bit of an angle. So U uh, L T R A. So I want a little bit of an angle there and I'm going to use uh, a bit of a serif font. Uh, so just the serif, so just these little guys at the end. And so this is what I'm going to look for on the banner. Now, uh, if I want to extend that out even further, uh, I'll just write the characters again. So I'll write a U and then the L and then the T and then the R and then the A, okay? but I'm going to do the double character thing as well. So I'll start with another line below and combine it together to make the U, okay? And then I'll double line the L and then I'll double line the T, serif at the bottom, serifs at the top. I'll double line the left side of the R. So kind of that first stroke essentially, uh, we're double tapping there. And then we'll do it with the A as well. So just double lining the A. So this is essentially what we're going to go for. Now, because there's four, uh, sorry, there's five characters in here, I'm going to start with the central character because I can just write that up, right up the middle and then I can add the two other characters on either side doing the exact same method where we kind of sketch it out and then we add the extra line in. So that's the strategy for uh, what we're going to be doing. Okay, so with our guide here, uh, kind of tent carded very conveniently here, uh, I'm just going to work on the scroll work here of the banner that's on the inside, uh, well, the, the, the banner, I guess. Um, so I'm going to make sure all the scripting here is pretty solid. And uh, like I mentioned before, I'm going to start with the T because it's the middle letter. Uh, because I've got five, I'm going to start with that T in the middle. So I'm just going to reproduce that same angle here, with the double line the line across and then I'm going to imagine the T coming out to here somewhere and here somewhere. So uh, that's going to be the T uh, and then I'm going to do the uh, letters on the right. So the R. Okay. And then the A will be there as well. I'm just kind of roughing these in. Now, if you bone this up in any way and you want to come back to it, um, you can just take your Screaming Skull, come over top of it again, and start from scratch. So, uh, working my way left here, just kind of allocating to make sure I have the same amount on both. Uh, so there's our L with our angle, and then the U will be right around here. 
because I want to curve it around. All right, so not very straight, uh, but not too bad. So uh, I'll start with the uh, L to thicken it up. I'll thicken it up on the inside here. All right. And then the R, I'll thicken it up and kind of push it towards the middle. I'm just kind of playing it by, by ear. And then the A will be a double line here, across the top and down below. So I'm basically trying to get these, uh, these double characters out. Now the U might be the only one that needs a bit of fixing. Um, and uh, actually, you know, it bends around a little bit, so it's not too bad. But I'll double line the U here. And I'll put the serifs in there as well. So clearly the U is way out of place. So what I might do is I might just grab my uh, Screaming Skull and just tidy that up a little bit and then hit it again. Now, uh, nice gentle covers on everything. And it's, again, it's not about getting it perfect the first time. It's about just kind of approximating back and forth. Um, I kind of like the L. Uh, the T looks, you know, fairly decent and tight. Um, so I'll just keep kind of working my way through. The R needs a bit of work as well. But that's the general idea. So we'll Screaming Skull over top. We'll do it again. And of course, if you keep the coats light, I mean, you're not going to get a ton of paint on there. We just want to wipe them off. Uh, the other option is to just lick your thumb. And with some of these Micron pens, you can just kind of erase something if you don't like the look of it. Uh, and then go in after with the, uh, the Screaming Skull. So I'll probably just do a combination of those two things and just repaint these on. All right, and with that, our banner is all finished. So I just went in and tidied up, of course, the, the lettering and all that, used a bit of that Screaming Skull, uh, added a little bit more text in here, and of course, uh, picked up this little bit of Henrysian gray that I'd missed there. Uh, now, the only thing left for this guy now is going to be our decals. Uh, I left his pauldron as a solid blue. However, uh, for the other Marines, I'm going to do something a little more kind of pre-heresy, a little more rogue trader, uh, kind of Gilman's own type of thing. So I want something that stands out with a little bit more pop. But this guy's got enough going on with the color and the banner and all of that. So I'm very happy with the way he turned out. Now it's time to move on to the heraldry. All right, so now we're moving on to the heraldry, which of course is all the decoration that goes on around these guys. Uh, all the sergeants have yellow knee pads on their left knee, so I am going to do a base here of Averland Sunset. They'll save me about 3,000 coats of aerial yellow uh, just by putting in the base there. And I'm just going to mark up their knee pads with some Averland Sunset. So um, I'm just gonna work my way around the knee pad here. And you'll see, of course, with the base color, it just gives it a nice, uh, solid base of pigment there. All right, so leaning heavily on some of the Rogue Trader era, era kind of pauldrons and uh, some of the pre Horus Heresy uh, type stuff, um, I've come up with a couple different ways of kind of amplifying the, the, the shoulder pads for our guys. So in this case here, what I want to do is I want to make sure that, uh, you know, instead of just having just fields of blue everywhere, uh, that we kind of dress them up a little bit. So I'm going to use a Fenrisian gray. Uh, each of my command units, so the lieutenants, the captain, and each of the sergeants are going to get a vertical bar just showing that they're in command. Uh, and then the squad is going to get a mix of these four different types of heraldry. So for every set of five, uh, we'll be using five. So uh, just a field of blue, a field of gray, and then just kind of the quartering off each of these. Uh, the other thing I like about these is these will be incredibly easy to paint and they'll contrast well, but blend in a little bit with the, uh, the white ultramarine decals that we're going to be putting on there as well. So that's the plan for this. So let's get going with that right away. Okay, again, so for the command guys now, we'll just start off with that vertical stripe. So all of my sergeants, uh, my captain, my lieutenants, everything will get uh, the same version here. So I'm just going to pick the middle of the pauldron, which is right about here, give it a mark. Okay, and then I'll do the same up top. So about there, because of course we're painting at an angle here. Um, so just a loose approximation. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to take it so that as I bang the camera around. Uh, I'm going to take it so that um, my pauldron here, I do a quarter of an inch uh, and halfway through, so the 16th of an inch is going to be there as well. So holding that there, 
do, 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 do. Uh, I'm going to go in now and I'm going to mark where that other part is. So it'll be about here and about here. All right. So what I'll do now is I'll extend those lines up to give me my vertical, my vertical line. Okay, and that gives me my vertical line on him. Now for the squad members, uh, I'm going to do the quartering. And with the quartering, I'm just going to draw a line kind of straight up the middle. And then I'll do a line straight this way as well. So right up the middle for both the elements of the pauldron here. Okay, and that'll give me my loose quartering, which is kind of off, but I can fix that. Okay, so we get the quartering done here. It's a little, it's a little loose in Fast and Furious here, but uh, we'll get the idea. So I'll quarter all of the uh, arm plates or the pauldron, sorry, for each of the two guys that are getting the checkerboard pattern. Uh, the leadership guy, of course, he's got his vertical, and then the other ones will be just either a straight fill with the Fenrisian gray or just a straight field of blue. And that'll give me five different variations uh, that we sketched out there onto our five guys. So it'll add a little bit of personality uh, without going too complex on the detail. So I'll finish up this quartering here and we'll get uh, amped up to do the painting of the gray. All right, so I've got them all marked up now. Um, uh, we've got our command with our vertical stripe here. We've got our two guys with quarters and we've got our field of blue. Easy, easy, he's done already, you hoo And uh, we've got our guy, other guy here and he's going to get a full uh, kind of treatment, a full pauldron of the Fenrisian gray. So that'll give me my five different varieties and yeah, let's get going. So the next easiest one, other than leaving the blue, is going to be the Fenrisian Grey uh, in the full field of the pauldrons. So very simply, I'm just going to take this here, and I'm just going to fill in the entirety of the pauldron, just being careful not to go over that gold. Okay, so we've got the full-on field of blue, we've got the full-on field of grey, and then next up we're going to be working on our our sergeant here and the sergeant is going to get just a vertical stripe on either side of our Fenrisian gray and uh, again super simple I uh, just kind of working my way through this here and I'm just gonna fill in our color here with the Fenrisian gray all right and while that dries I'm just gonna shuffle off to the next guy here and I'm going to be doing the quarter panels and I'm just going to do on the first guy I'm going to do the uh, upper left of the panel gray and the bottom right of the panel gray. Okay, and then I'm going to do uh, with the other quarter panel gent, uh, I'm going to do the exact opposite. So with my other quarter panel guy, I'm going to have my top right be gray. Okay, and my bottom left be gray as well. All right, so I'll finish all those up. My command guy, the uh, quarter panel gents, and uh, obviously I've got the full panels uh, for the blue and the gray as well. So I'll just finish these up. A couple coats, uh, light coats on the guys, because obviously it's starting to dry a little bit on here. All right, so I'll do that for both sides for everyone. I'll get them all finished up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got all the pauldrons all done up. Now, a lot of the trolls are going to say, dude, that is not classic Ultramarines, but it's actually uber classic Ultramarines. Uh, this is going way back to the pre-heresy and rogue trader days. So um, I like the fact that it gives a little bit of extra color and it's pretty bright right now, but when we wash it down, uh, it'll look like these bright markings have been kind of dulled down by the din of battle and all of that. So let's proceed immediately on to the washing. I'm going to use my uh, wash here, which is going to be... Um, uh, it's it's uh, it's a custom mix. It's 25% Nuln Oil, 25% Agrax Earthshade, and it's going to be another 50% uh, Floor Wax, but I've talked about that lots. Uh, let's just get going on this guy. And I'm just going to wash him and then let it sit for about 45 minutes or so. So I'll just slap this stuff on, and already you can see how it kind of darkens things down, and it's a nice, beautiful contrast for the colors.
All right, so I'll, I'll wash the guy and make sure the pooling doesn't happen too heavily. And actually happens uh, not at all would be great. And uh, so I'll wash all actually five of them and then we'll be right back. So I'll let it sit about 45 minutes and then we'll come back in. And as we're touching up the rest of the Marine, we'll work on the knee pad and we'll work on uh, tidying up these darker kind of shoulder pauldrons. All right, I've got the Hellblaster squad all tooled up so that our, our colors are in line. Uh, the only things left over are going to be the pauldrons and, of course, the knee pad for the sergeant. Uh, so I'm going to go in now. I'm going to use a little bit of a larger pen. You can use the same one as always, but uh, I'm going to use the 01 for this one because I'm going to be painting over the lines. I don't need a lot of fine detail. And uh, I'm just going to do just a just a big, uh, you know, a, a basic uh, crisscross pattern on the knee pads here, or on the knee pad of the sergeants. And of course, I'll be doing this with all the sergeants uh, for all the different guys. Now, I could do a much lighter pattern uh, or I mean, a much smaller, smaller squares, but I kind of like the big and bold nature of this where you'd see them from no matter where. So, all right, so it looks good. Once I've got that cross on there, I'm going to just fill in the spaces with uh, Euro Yellow and Abaddon Black and just make sure it's all shaken up. And it's just going to be just kind of a crisscross, straight up pattern here. But it's still going to provide lots of contrast for, for what we want to do. So I'll just go in and I'll fill this uh, the two opposing corners here with your real yellow. And I'll just take it nice and easy with the coats here. I don't want it to be too strong. And once that's done, I'll move into the Abaddon Black on the opposite corner. Now I don't want this going on too thick, so I've thinned this down a little bit. And I'll do the other corner here as well. Okay, so with that knee pad all complete, uh, it's nice, it's bold, it's bright, and definitely you can tell this guy's a sergeant, even if he doesn't have the, uh, the red helmet on, but I'm really enjoying just that old school Ultramarines uh, iconography there for their for their sergeants. So really, really happy there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is finish up my shoulder pads here. And I'm going to do that in Fenrisian gray. Now I'm going to use this guy as an example because um, he's not perfect. Like, I mean, the it's a little tricky to get those, you know, nice sharp edges on that, uh, on the rounding of the pauldrons there. However, like when you look at him, he looks really good like this. Uh, however, when you go to the side, you'll see that it's inconsistent on either side. So as long as your coats are nice and light, one of the things you can do is you can just, you know, keep correcting as you go. And it's, it's, it's not that, you know, good painters paint perfectly all the time. One of the things that they do is they just kind of just keep correcting uh, as they go. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with this. I'll just make sure I correct it. So it's a little more uh, even with the other side there. And then, of course, I can come in with that, uh, the Altdorf Guard blue after, uh, just like I would normally paint things, and I can just touch it up later. So uh, for now, I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to do this kind of striated, uh, kind of rough fill in, because uh, I want it to look a little used and a little dirty. I don't want it to be a perfect, perfect sheet of color. So I'll fill in the rest of these, uh, these Fenrisian gray stripes here, and then I'll come back with the Altdorf Guard blue, and we'll tidy things up as well. Okay, and so as I'd be passing over the blue here with the Altdorf Guard blue, uh, I'll also tidy up the pauldrons as well for these guys. And it'll just be the same process for all of the different designs, whether it's the, uh, you know, kind of the, the checkered, quartered uh, version of this, or whether it's the, uh, you know, the, the vertical stripe, or whether it's just, you know, the regular uh, fill all the way through. So again, looking a little sharper there, uh, but here's looking a little crooked as well. I don't know if you can see that there, but uh, I'm just going to go in now, and I'm just going to touch up with the Altdorf Guard Blue, uh, the blue parts. Again, leaving lots of that kind of recessed shading in there as well around the edges. And of course, we'll black line pen that as well. But we're just trying to get these colors off here. All right, and when I'm done with this, um, because I don't have that yellow-black contrast, I'll go in and I'll black line wherever two colors meet or wherever there's a ridge in the armor.
All right, and that'll tie up all of our heraldry and iconography. The only thing that we're missing now is our decals for our ultramarine logos, of course, uh, on the banner, on the pauldrons, you name it, uh, even on the hip plates for the captain here. And that's going to come in a later video. We're just actually running a, a little bit long, so I'm cutting some of the details out of here into separate videos. And uh, I'm actually waiting for a three-part decal system from Vallejo, which I'm really looking forward to using. So that'll be in another video. That'll take up its own time. But the banners turned out really, really well on the ancient, uh, loving that it's big and kind of bold and it stands out and it's you know it's, it's very grand in nature which is awesome uh, you can see that we've taken the pauldron vertical striping and applied it to all of our command uh, elements in the army here which is great we've got our other different types of pauldrons uh, there and there as well very rogue trader uh, very appropriate to Gilman com coming back and uh, you know fighting alongside Gilman which is fantastic so he'd definitely be what he's used to we've got the knee pads on the sergeant which look nice and bright and bold no matter where you you are looking at it uh, even if they don't have the red helmets so absolutely fantastic now the other two videos that I want to do on top of that are maybe uh, three uh, there's going to be one on eye lenses there'll be the power sword for the captain and of course I want to do that kind of black uh, you know smoke coming uh, not smoke uh, but kind of that that scarring or that that staining of the front of the plasma incinerators just to make it show that they were make it look like they were used so uh, that tidies us up rather nicely and uh, thanks for watching so uh, if you like the video, please hit that like button. It really helps get the video and the channel out there. And if you like what you've seen or you want to see the other two parts of the series, uh, feel free to subscribe and check out the channel. Uh, we do all kinds of gaming nerdery uh, type stuff. And of course, we're painting a whole pile of, uh, of 40K lately. Uh, I'm also going to be working on the Death Guard after this and some of the Gene Stealer cults as well. So thanks so much for watching, guys. This was a blast to put together for you. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Catch you then.